Yeah, all right, guys. Let me know if you can hear me, and uh, let me know if you can see anything in the comments section. All right, guys, let me know if you can hear the, uh, let me know if you can hear me or not on this microphone. All right, this is the first live stream that, uh, that I've done from out here. Uh, we're pretty remote. Those of you that have been to class or been out here for uh, training, We'll know that we're pretty far remote. We're up in the mountains, um, looking at three states right now, that direction, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Um, so I'm going to do live stream. Um, hadn't really done a whole lot of political videos lately. It just, it's the whole blood pressure thing. You know, uh, you can only do so much of it. I, I tend to focus on the things that I can control uh, with my, you know, family and friends and, and students and such. That's what I try to focus my sphere of influence on. But um I also know that uh, a lot of people out there, you know, you may live in a place that is not so much conducive to freedom. Maybe you live in a place that, um, hell, who the hell knows, maybe a former colony like, you know, Massachusetts, the rails a uh, long time ago. But uh, I'm going to talk about some natural rights today. Uh, one thing I want to point out here is that... Um, you know, there's comment section, go, 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 go. So I want to like look at the camera so that we have a human <laughs> interaction. But I also will look at some of that. Um, one option for, if you know, answering questions and things like that. You know, I want to talk about natural rights to begin with. But uh, after that, we can, you know, do a questions and answer in that. Um, if you want to, you know, quote questions or anything, you know, feel free to ask those. But also... Uh, super chats on. So if you want to uh, support this channel in any way, then whatever you, whatever you can do, that's fine by me. Uh, I'll try to give you guys uh, recognition for that. Um, I know Brett, uh, right even before the chat started, like dropped 50 on, on that super chat. So I appreciate that very much. Um, actually, if you figured out, this is like as technologically advanced as I get a microphone. Um, and then also we got a, a microphone for the range so we can do more range videos with the microphone. So, you know, a lot of times that's made possible through you guys and, and Patreon. And I'm not a tech guy at all. Uh, like if it doesn't work mechanically, like I don't really know how to do it. So I had some assistance on how to set this up. So uh, it's good. Um, I want to start off. But first and foremost, let's uh, let's address the, the elephant in the room with all the uh, so-called gun control, almost entirely Democrat. Yeah, and you guys know what they were going to do. They had all this stuff written before they even uh, got into the office. And, and that's fine uh, because we know what they're going to do. It's kind of like asking a rattlesnake not to bite a rabbit's throat. Uh, that's kind of what they have to do uh, because they are truly demonic people. Uh, I don't believe in any platform whatsoever uh, of what they stand for. And I uh, truly believe that Washington, D.C. is a best pool. It, 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 and it, it is the least american city in the entire united states that, that that place is supposed to be our capital and it doesn't even reflect one ounce of americanism it doesn't uh it does not represent me it does not represent the vast majority of you uh, watching this right now uh, it does not represent our constitution it does not represent anything whatsoever about the american republic um, in fact, the people that run that place are so inept and so corrupt and so vile uh, that I literally uh, would not even consider them in any way, shape or form a legitimate government at this point. Um, they, they, they just passed a two trillion dollar spending bill, like only 10 percent of it had to do with covid relief. Um, but it certainly had a lot to do with with getting their little states what they wanted. So the spending is back. Uh, it hadn't really ever left. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we'll talk about the bill and uh, the, the gun control stuff that uh, Sheila Jackson Lee uh, from Houston, um, you know, has proposed and all that. The registration, like banning firearms at semi-automatic firearms and magazines of, you know, whatever their magic number is. I think it's 10 rounds or more. The demographics for the channel, guys, is awesome. A nice spread of people. I know that I've got teenagers all the way up to people that are in their 70s and 80s. So it's a nice spread of a demographic. 
uh, of people that are here. Um, one thing that I really want to uh, talk about is, uh, you know, some of the younger people, you know, people that are under maybe under the age of 30, right? Some of you guys out there that were born, you know, right as soon as the Cold War ended, you know, when, in other words, then when communism was, was swept into the uh, geopolitical dustbin for the most part, but it's made a resurgence. Um, 30 years ago, the communism was destroyed, uh, at least politically, like for the United States. We figured out we won. Okay, they couldn't sustain their economic system. You know, and you run out of other people's money to spend. Well, uh, that's usually what happens, and quote, quoting Margaret Thatcher. But um, so you younger guys and gals out there may not remember, but in 1994, the Democrats did another assault weapon bill. And Joe Biden was, of course, a big fan of that one, um, where they, they for a 10-year period, said you couldn't buy or purchase new magazines that held more than 10 uh, rounds. Thing is, the thing is, guys, is that right now, like we've got more gun owners in this country uh, than we've ever had. And I'm talking numbers wise. There's more people that are getting involved in um, firearms. And that's good. And I know there's a lot of people out there also that have been involved with firearms for a long time. But make no mistake about it. This, this is not 1994. This isn't when the only people that had guns were like Ducks Unlimited people shooting shotguns in the duck blind. Uh, you know, this isn't uh, only people using bolt action rifles or, or, or anything like that or revolvers. And those are all great guns. Don't get me wrong, but this is where we're at, where we've got tens of millions of people here that are firearms owners that own ARs, AKs, Glocks, SIGs, whatever, it, it, like semi-automatic firearms. And this is the largest number of people that have ever done that in our nation's history. And here, Here's the other good thing. There are more veterans in this country than at any other time in our history as well. You know, for the last 20 years, uh, there have been people that have gone in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, all over the place, all over the world, and they've gotten out of the military, right? And that's a whole nother topic of conversation, what's happening to the military. But, um, you know, it like, like really hurts me, you know, like to see what's happened to it. And then the standards being lowered and the, and the, all the uh, rhetoric that's involved with, uh, with the political careerist generals that uh, run the show out there. Um, so, you know, what we're talking about now is we got real veterans out there, like guys that have seen combat, right? Guys that have been to Iraq and Afghanistan that know how to run guns, like guys that know what it's like to get shot at guys that took an oath to support and defend the constitution. Um, guys that, um, uh, you know, that and, and, and gals also, you know, that really understand what this is all about. And I'm not a person that usually does the doom and gloom thing. Like, I'm not normally like a pessimistic individual. I mean, I'm a realistic individual, so I can usually objectively look at something and know where the tidal wave of, of things are. Um, and here's the thing, guys, you know, when I when I look at this, I don't I don't see a negative thing. Like, I see a vast, vast opportunity. Like I see a vast opportunity to like, I'm, I'm actually excited about the future of this country. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, it, it's so crazy when I hear people say, oh, it's over, it's over. It's, well, it's not really, uh, it's not over. We, we have an opportunity to, to reestablish this Republic in our lifetime. We have, we have that opportunity, like at, like very few other times in our nation's history, has there been this kind of assault on individual liberties, like very, very rarely. Well, we got to look at history and, and being a person that, that really uh, likes history here. I just saw from Orlando, man, like uh, for the super chat, I really appreciate that in California. That's like in our first year, a lot of guys flying out there. I got awesome students out in California. And here's something a lot of people don't know about California or maybe have overlooked it. Uh, California has more actually conservative people than any other state in the country, numbers wise, maybe not percentage wise, but numbers wise, there's a lot of people out there that, that believe in natural rights, that believe in the Second Amendment, that that see the insanity out there. I had a really awesome student, a, a naturalized citizen who lived in California forever, and he actually came over uh, from California. He's living in Georgia now, but uh, incredible story as well. So. Love you guys uh, out there in California. And I've, you know, last time I was in California was when I was at the School of Infantry for the for the Marines. So I um, didn't really get to sightsee very much, at least not in the cities. But I did sightsee all over San Onofre and San Clemente. And you guys, Damien, thanks for that as well in the super chat. But uh, so, guys, the younger people out there, the younger people 
um, I was a high school teacher for three, uh, three years. I don't know. Uh, Oklahoma, man, dachshunds rule. They do. They do. I like them. Um, I had a part dachshund one time. I guess he ran away. He, I guess he was like on food strike or something, or maybe he just ran into the mountain. But, um, it, yeah, you guys, uh, younger people, I really enjoy. I taught high school for three years public school. I didn't teach at uh, private school. I did my student teaching at private school, uh, but I did teach high school for three years. So these younger people, uh, they're actually very intelligent. Uh, they, they, they're they able to analyze things, but here's the thing. They've got to get the other side. They've got to, got to get other opinions. They've got to get other uh, points of view, right? They've got to do that. And what we're looking at with, with, with younger people is they need to be able to differentiate between the BS and what's real. And the, and the thing is, is that we that are older, you know, maybe in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, like that, but they need the knowledge and they need the wisdom. See, knowledge, there's all kinds of information out there. It's going to keep going out. It's going to keep going out. We're going to keep sending information. And the thing is, is we've got to take that information. They've got to be able to take that information and understand what knowledge is. Knowledge and information are not the same thing. And then you have to have the wisdom. You have to have the discernment uh, to be able uh, to do that. You have to be able to have that wisdom uh, to be able to differentiate between what's BS and what's real. And so these younger people, they want to do it. Like I guarantee you what they, when they hear these narratives being spoken by the people in D.C. or when they hear all this narratives being spoken by, uh, you know, people all, all over the place, I can guarantee you that uh, that they'll be able to make an informed decision. Todd, appreciate that, man. Super chat, uh, Tim bucks man that's that's awesome bright yellow too and yeah, it's like uh that'll get your attention um but when i say uh about teaching younger people guys we're going to teach them about natural rights today and i know that we the, the title of the video is talking about the second amendment and we're that's what we're going to do and the second amendment is natural rights uh, that's what it is and what natural rights are and and, the, and people will call it a theory but it, it's not a theory it's, it's the entire foundation for western civilization um Rich, 29, 29 of uh, awesome, man. 20 bucks. Appreciate that uh, very much. Um, what natural rights are, and this is the entire foundation of Western society, Western civilization, of which the United States is a part of um, rights that are guaranteed to us by our creator. Um, I understand there are people out there that may not believe in a creator, and, and, and that's it's absolutely your prerogative. I'm not like judging people that don't believe in a creator, but, but please understand the entire basis of Western civilization is uh, that that is where our rights come from is the creator. Um, now I know that there's different ideas as to what that, who that creator is and uh, all that. And that's, I don't want to get into a religious debate whatsoever. I just like had a really easy going day yesterday. Doesn't, endow us with rights and that's in the declaration of independence so when it says that we are endowed by our creator with inalienable rights right life liberty and pursuit of happiness what we're talking about there is is that the entire reason why we give consent to our government of which we are a representative republic constitutional representative republic um, what we have to do is we have to look at how important natural rights are and that other human beings cannot take that away. The entire reason we give them consent to govern us, what I'm trying to say is what happens when instead of protecting those rights, instead of being the safeguard for those rights, what happens when government stops being the guarantor, the protector, and becomes the greatest violator? You know, what happens when that takes place? Well, I can tell you what our founders believed should take place, and that is that we either alter that government, which means change it, or we abolish it. And that's in the Declaration of Independence. So when you've got people out there, the first thing they do is they raise their hand and they swear or affirm that they will support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And then the very first thing that they do um, – is violate that the moment they take office by signing executive orders, by uh, pass, trying to pass bills that will take your property and your second amendment rights. And if you don't do it, then you go to prison and all this stuff. It's, it's, it's literal robbery. Like it's literal robbery. It is the very definition of 
robbery. Robbery is the unlawful taking of someone else's property by force or threats of violence. And that's exactly what the definition of, of robbery is. And the federal government of the United States has been very good at robbery uh, since its inception. Um, Scott, I appreciate that, man. Kentucky. Yeah, I'm looking at Kentucky right there. I'm looking at Bell County right across the uh, ridge. Um, so when we're looking at is, uh, you know, we have to teach these younger people that our rights don't come from human beings. Uh, they, they don't uh, they don't understand that, that we don't like have this 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 other human beings giving us our rights. That is not what happens. So we have to look at. All these people. These Chuck Schumers, you know, these Nancy Pelosi's, these Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, that little millennial twit AOC who, who, who literally could not pay her own rent before she got into Congress. And I was in the budgetary committee. That's ironic, isn't it? Um, so when we look at all this stuff, guys, you have to re realize uh, no one – they're they're a running joke. Like they don't have the authority, nor do they have the ability to – take those rights away from us so they can pass a bill like they can do that but please understand that they cannot take that away from us they, they can't do that they can pass a law like think about throughout our nation's history how many laws have been passed throughout this 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 country's history that are no longer laws because they were deemed immoral you know, think about, oh, no, don't tell me where I have to sit. <laughs> you know, think about other laws that, uh, you know, that, that at one point in time, you could return someone to their owner. Like, I'm sorry, but human beings don't have owners. Like, they don't, they, they don't have owners. That violates all of your natural rights, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So uh, the thing is, guys, is that she, she, these people will tell you that they are the authority. But no, they're not. We, the people right here. We are the authority in this country and people are in uh, in government. They are our servants. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure that I understand business pretty well. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I understand like how, how like hierarchy works in, in, in the military and law enforcement and in and, and business. But the servants don't tell the masters what to do. And if they do, then they get kicked out. And so when I'm looking at uh, people here, in office that are saying, oh, well, we're going to we're going to pass this bill for the greater safety. Well, that's not true because they have the people surrounding them that have all of their firearms. They've got people that have firearms. They've got people that have the very firearms protecting them that they don't want you or me to have. And so it's not that they're against the guns. They're against people like us having guns. And so I find that very ironic and I find that that, that we would call that hypocritical. When, when they are lauding one set of values, but don't adhere to those values, but then want other people to adhere to those. So we, uh, we have to un understand, guys, that, that the Second Amendment um, is not something to be toyed with or played with. It's not something uh, that, that needs to uh, be even discussed whether or not we should have more firearms or less firearms. It's not up to government to even, even do anything with that. They, they aren't a part of that equation. Government is not a part of that equation. If you don't want to be under their control, their law, you simply cannot. Like, it's like, let me give you an example. Last year out here in Claiborne County, I'm in Claiborne County, Tennessee. We're pretty rural. We did our Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. Like in Tennessee, there's zero issues with, with that. Like we don't have to worry about anything like that happening here. Nonetheless, we preemptively did that. And in a town, in a county meeting, in a county commission meeting, um, probably where they normally would get five to 10 people there. We had three or 400 people there and probably more out in the hallway. So that's how important that this is to people. And so we did that last December, right? here in Claiborne County. And it was a good thing. So in one, in your areas, wherever you are, and I know certain places are better than others, wherever you are, you know, what we need to start doing is we need to start getting that sphere of influence going here. You know, put your police chief on record. You know, what do they support? What would they do? You know, understand um, that th there's no, there's, there is no, re there's no argument for gun control. If it's truly to reduce crime, then you would think that the states that had the, stick the strictest gun laws would have the lowest crime. And they don't. They have the worst. 
places like Baltimore and LA and New York City and Chicago. Boy, how how how's that in Chicago where you have more people shot and killed in Chicago than you do in Iraq? You know, um, how, so that doesn't make any sense. And they'll say, well, those guns are coming from places where we were the easier access. Then why are those places where they have easier access? Why don't they have the crime rates and the killings? You know, these politicians will not acknowledge. They, they absolutely refuse to acknowledge that if you took away the guns, like there would still be crime. And this is across the world, the case. You know, this is, this is across the world, the case. They've, they've tried this arms control and the, and the crimes are still there. The crimes are still there, uh, whether it's 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 a uh, violent assault with a knife, whether it's a violent assault or with firearms. They still do it with firearms. You know, um, Nathaniel, I appreciate that. Um, Minneapolis. Oh, man. Yeah. The the, the Moog in Minnesota. Huh? Minneapolis. So, uh, yeah, you guys are up there and. Um, you know, Minneapolis, a lot of good hunters, sportsmen up there. I've been up there a long time ago. Um, you know what I would advise for you out there living in, in Minneapolis, man. You know, <laughs> live your life. People are tired of this stuff. Well, how'd that defund the police thing work up? Work out up there? Oh, they're hiring them back for like twice as much. Yeah, that's another classic example of city management. Um, but yeah, we 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 look at at these things, guys and gals, and and it's pretty insane when they say, "Oh, we got to get rid of of ARs or AKs because oh, the, 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 it, it's funny." Did you know, and you can look this up, like this is simple information. Like, did you know that you could literally have a better chance of being struck and killed by lightning than you would like actually being shot in a public school in this country? Like, did you know that? Like, I, I'm not joking. Like, look this up. It's it, it's like the, the, the numbers and the odds of it happening are, are far greater of being struck and killed by lightning. Um, and, and, you know, we look at uh, what kills what kills children in this country more than rifles do, uh, swimming pools. Uh, more toddlers drown in bathtubs. So it's really not an issue of, of our people dying from them. And like I said, if these guns were horrible, why are they surrounded by Secret Service with the same firearms? Why are they surrounded with Secret Service with AR-15s, 10 and a half inch night armaments and 70 grain Barnes TSX rounds? I know exactly what they carry, guys. Like I, I got friends there. Like I know exactly what they do. So this is not a, a uh, this is not a, a mystery. Okay. Uh, I know exactly what their duty load is. Like they, they these people, oh, got to get rid of all this ammo. No, no, you use it. You use it to protect the elite in this country. They're not, they're not any more special. They're not any more special than you or me or anybody watching this. Um, you know, you want to talk about killing ch children? You, you want to talk about like what that does? You want to talk about how many children are killed in this country? You know what kills more children than anything in this country? Women that decide they don't want to have a child born. And so they chemically kill it. That kills more children in this country than anything. Um, you know what else does, guys? You know what else kills more children in this country than anything else? Stupidity. And I'm talking about stupidity from, from people in government, like saying that their parents can't go out and earn a living. Their parents can't go out and use their own property to what they want to do. You know, and, and it's and it's pretty crazy. Um, I will tell you guys that uh, when we're looking at here, we're not dealing with, with normal human beings. OK, we're not we're not dealing with people that are that are normal up here. We're not dealing with people that that have that same passion for freedom in their heart that most of you have watching this. They don't have that passion for uh, live and let other people alone. Right. I'm a pretty libertarian guy. OK, uh, I, I'm a libertarian that leans more towards conservative traditional values. OK, but if people want to do what they're going to do, go ahead. I may not agree with it. I may not like it, but. You know, I have zero authority whatsoever to tell people like and demand that they live their life a certain way in compliance. But what we've got to look at here, folks, is I want this country to be more free for the people that are coming after us than it was for us. And it's going to be a hell of an uphill climb. Um, Nathaniel, you're an immigrant. Um, there's a lot of immigrants. A lot of immigrants that are coming here that believe in the freedom. I've had students from former Soviet Union, from East Germany, uh, Cuba, Guatemala, formerly the people coming from China. Um, I see that. And, and it's amazing to see these people that they believe in America more than people that have been born here and that had opportunities like they can't even believe. And... Um, so what I what you guys have to realize is that we're not fighting against normal individuals. Like we're not they're not mentally stable. I mean, if you if you really 
doubt that they're if you if you doubt what I just said, if you really think that these people are are, are mentally stable, why don't you watch the confirmation hearing for the Health and Human Services cabinet member position? And I'm not even going to elaborate on that. I don't want like you know you guys get it. Like that is not a normal human being. Um, Northern Idaho, heck, yeah, man, the readout up. There's where it is at. There's good people out there. We've had a lot of them from Idaho too. But uh, yeah, if you really think that uh, that that person that is that that was nominated for the Health and Human Services from Pennsylvania, if you think that person normal about those, those things, um, anyway, it's, it's just a, I, I really want you guys to know about natural rights, security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So, okay, what is a militia? Well, militia, according to what our founders understood it as, the militia was to be used for the security and and for the uh, stability of your community. And who could be in the militia? Anybody. Uh, anybody from the age of, I believe the ages was 18 to 50. You know, and back then, of course, we could certainly uh, look about uh, – Back in time, people didn't live as long back then, so we could extend that much farther. It's, it's basically all able-bodied adults in this country. Uh, um, that's what it is. Um, and the militia, the whole point of it uh, was to uphold the Constitution, right? To uphold the Constitution, to make sure that there was not like insurrection. Um, in other words, people coming in and trying to take over territory. People coming in and trying to uh, subvert. The Republic. That's why the militia was established. It was established because they knew that there was a lot of people out there um, that that would try to take other people's rights away. Uh, namely, you had a lot of frontier wars. You know, you had a lot of of, of violence. You had a lot of individuals that did that. Um, wow, got a family a guy from Albania for families from Albania. Heck yeah, man! Like, <laughs> ask them how communism worked out. You know, ask them how it was like to live under that yoke. You know, not very good. That's why they are not anymore. So, um, you know, what we're looking at here, guys, is that militia was supposed to be um, the safeguards for the community, the stability. I guess in a way you could say that they fulfilled or they had the role of of the police, uh, how police would would stop others from inflicting violence on, on somebody else. For example, like, you know, robbery and arson and things like that. The militia would be able to do that. And they're, they were really designed for uh, security. That's what they were designed for. They were not only designed for security, but they were also designed that, that they could safeguard from invasion. You know, they could safeguard from invasion if there was anybody that was trying to invade their community, if there's anybody trying to do that. And so, um, and the militia was, was this directly responsible for supporting uh, not only the military, um, it also was supposed to support the, the Constitution and in the lawful federal if they needed that. And so what we're looking at is militia. And, and by the way, like it is not... Uh, National Guard. The National Guard didn't even exist for the next hundred years. So this argument that, oh, the National Guard is the new militia, that, that's not true. The National Guard wasn't even around, guys. Like the National Guard wasn't even a concept in the mind of, of, of the founding fathers. Okay. So, so this isn't like that, that this is not retroactive that you can say, oh, this is what they meant in the future. They were clairvoyant. You know, they were these, these, these seers. That, that's not it. Um, so the militia, like, let's make that very, very clear. It is not individuals, lawyers, doctors, blacksmiths, guns. I mean, it was it was a lot of people that that were normal community members that that were not professional soldiers. I mean, this is very clear, especially when it when it, Richard Henry Lee elaborates on this. James Madison elaborates this on Federalist number forty six. So when they are elaborating on these things and they're and they're talking about individuals that they have an individual right to keep and bear arms, Patrick Henry believed that, Richard Henry Lee believed that, Thomas Jefferson certainly believed that. All of our founders believed in an individual right to keep and bear arms. And 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 it's it's incredible that people would say that that the Second Amendment isn't an individual right. Like everything else in the Bill of Rights is like you get to protect individual liberty. And that largely it was a response to the British and what they did during the occupation of the colonies, especially right before the revolution. So, you know, it's incredible when, when people can look at these, these rights and say, oh, it's not an individual right. Well, what well, is, I mean, it's very clear that it was uh, an individual right. 
so I think that 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 the militia is an individual duty, and that it's certainly not associated with government. It's it's not that at all. It's for a community. It is for safeguarding a community. Now, the right of the people. It's okay. Well, 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 well regulated. What does that mean? Well, well regulated means in good working order. It also means or. Good in good work in good working order, proficient. In other words, they wanted their members, well-regulated militia, they wanted their members to be proficient in the use of firearms and drill and tactics and movements. So it's incredible. Like when you when people will say, well, well regulated means that it can be government regulated. That that's not what well regulated meant in the 18th century parlance, guys. In the 18th century vernacular, it was well run or well disciplined or that they were proficient. So I think that when people put things in a proper context and that we apply and look at the history from the standard of the day, it's very clear what our founders wanted. They wanted individual citizens who were proficient in the use of firearms so that they could safeguard their community and constitutional republic. That's what they wanted a militia for. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. So well-regulated, being necessary to the security of a free state. Okay. I don't know of anything in our documents, whether it's a constitution, declaration of independence, anything else like that. Nothing else is described as necessary. The second amendment is it. The second amendment says that it is necessary to the security of a free state necessary. So that means it's required. <laughs> so you have to have a, in order to have a militia, you have to have private citizens. And in order to have private citizens and militia, they have to be armed and they have to be armed with the firearms that they're expected to fight in combat with. So what would that mean in our day today? Well, certainly AR-15, certainly AKs, and we could expand that indefinitely if you would like, uh, but certainly not banning those guns like that, I think is a very, very sure way to look at this. So not only were they required to have a gun in good working order, they were required to have a certain number of ammunition. I think it was either 40 or 50 rounds. I'll have to look that up. I'm going right here so far. So it, you have, they had to have not only a firearm in good working order, but they also had a prerequisite number of rounds of musket balls. So they were required to do that. And I think that, um, that, that looking at the second amendment as a duty and an individual, right? Because rights do come with responsibilities. I think it's very obvious what our founders wanted. They wanted people who could at a moment's notice defend their communities, but they had to be armed to do that. They had to uh, be able to do that. Okay. So the other thing is, is that we have to look at uh, necessary to the security of a free state. So what our founders did is that they equated a free and secure state with individual firearms ownership. So taking away individual firearm ownership makes less secure. And I would argue that anybody that is um, advocating for, for gun control in this country should be charged with treason. Because what you are doing is aiding and abetting our enemy by diminishing our capability to protect this. So... You know, it makes us less secure, makes us less free, and, and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So now on top of that all, and Giovanni, man, I appreciate that. I uh, hope everything's going well up there for you. Uh, you know, we're up there where the where the country started, so good stuff. Um, what we're looking at, guys, is um, the right of the people. And it's not a collective right. It's an individual right. The right of the people to keep, which means possess or own. And bear means to carry upon one's body. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So what does infringed mean? Well, in the, in the 18th century, what infringed meant was that to even approach this, to even bring it up, to even bring up an idea that they would be able to do this, that would be an infringement just to suggest it. Not to pass a bill, but to even simply talk about it publicly. Hey, do you think people should have fire locks anymore? I don't think so. That would be an infringement. And so what these Orwellian dystopian dirtbags in Congress are doing is infringing on the Second Amendment. There's a lot of things that I can't say. There's a lot of things that I would like to say. There's a lot of things that I would tell you directly to do that I would like to do that, but we also have to play the long game.
And I think you can read between the lines. I don't believe in any human being that got elected into office has the authority to disarm or pass bills that will disarm the American people. That That is not what I believe at all. I, I think that that if they decide to do that, I think they, they should read a history book. And they should read a history book about what my ancestors did at places like the, with the Over Mountain Men, um, King's Mountain. Uh, they ought to read a history book about what my ancestors did when, you know, it was the war between the states. And uh, they put 400,000 of them in the dirt. And I think that, you know, people need to understand that uh, our whole point of this country is that we have liberties and freedoms unlike any other place in the history of the world. And I think that, um, I think we need to start having that in our heart, that desire to be free. And I'll tell you guys, and I'll end uh, with this. Our desire to remain free has to be greater than their desire to control us. And as long as that desire to remain free is there, And they understand that there would be consequences for what's going to happen. Neil, I appreciate that. Um, I, I really want you guys to believe that we're in the right. Like, it's that simple. Like, we are not going to, we are not proactively hurting anybody. We are not the ones telling out, telling other people how they have to live their life. We're not the ones say, oh, you have to carry a firearm. Like, don't. I don't care if, if you don't, if like, if you don't want to carry a firearm, then don't carry one. I personally am not going to go without one because I believe in protection of my family and friends. If you don't want to carry one, that's your option. I'm not going to draw my gun and blast you in the face because I disagree with you. Um, Goldenrod, man, hey, how's it going? Hey, we got that color. St the, the targets are still painted exactly the color that is on that super chat right there. You can't miss it. Um, <laughs> the goldenrod was the color. The description was the color, the description of the target. We at a mid-range. And I understand how upsetting it can be for people uh, to say <laughs> once a country loses its virtue and founding values, it's very, very difficult to reclaim that. And I understand that. But here's what I do know. You have the most influence where you live. You have the most influence with the people you come in direct contact with every day. And let me ask you this question. Do you think that we're going to stop doing what we're doing out here at Valor Ridge? Like, do you think that if they pass a, a gun control bill, that, like I'm going to stop training people? Like, do you think that, do you, do you think if they pass this thing and like, oh, you can't own this? Like, do you think that like guys like me or anybody else watching it, are, are you going to forfeit their authority to govern us? At that point, they forfeit any and all agreement or consent of, of any kind of taxes, of any kind of, like they, at that point, they forfeit it all. And does that take courage? Yeah, it does. Orlando, man, I appreciate that very much. But um, yeah, guys, it, it's about freedom. It's about courage. It's about doing the right thing. Um, and, and that's, I just want to do a, a, a live stream. I'll stay live for about maybe a few more minutes. Um, if you guys want questions that, you can hit the super chat or, or, or anything like that or stickers or whatever they do. I'm not a tech guy. I don't know. But the thing is, guys, if you got questions for me, I'll, I'll try to answer. But I'm only going to be for a few more minutes. Um, other thing, I want to do a regular live stream. Like I said, if you guys have been out here, you know that the service is a little spotty. It's about as good as it gets. So I would like to do some live stream maybe once every week or every other week, I think, maybe a couple times a month. Um, and also would like to uh, – times i, I probably will probably be on a sunday so is 4 30 a good time or, or maybe later like and so i this is kind of information that i need so if you guys got questions or that go ahead and hit the uh, comments but i'll i'll stay live for maybe a, a few more minutes here Yep, Kentucky, man. I got a lot of people in Kentucky. That's like one of my favorite places to go. May hit the bourbon trail here later this year. If they, if they stop getting stupid. And chickens, of course, are getting riled up over there. Um, 
yeah, guys, good deal. So good time, 4.30, maybe 5. Um, depends on it. You know, depends on, um, yeah. Guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. Hit the subscribe button. I've had a lot of people tell me that they've been unsubscribed from the channel. Um, I think that's weird and unfollowed or whatever. And, I, and I'll call them. I'll say, hey, they're like, no, I didn't do that. So make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that uh, the Facebook's there. I do a lot of posts on Facebook and keep you guys informed informed about what's going on out here at the ridge um trapper asks is do i think there'll be a peaceful separation from the left well let me ask you this question what what has the left ever done that's been peaceful is there is there ideology or is there ideas about voluntary compliance or are there ideas all about coercion and use of force with the government monopoly um, there's your answer, man. And uh, go, fortunately for us, like they have low testosterone. Like they have, I've, I've, I've like touched them before. Like I have to, like you, you push them and they fall away like a wet paper. Like that, they're they're little people. Like they don't, they don't like they don't know how to roll, and they're very small. All people in general, their brains are small and their bodies are small. If you don't get notifications for the channel, uh, ladies and gentlemen, hit hit the notification bell. It's like if you. If you don't hit the bell, it won't happen. So, so just hit that. Oh, a guy asked me, do I smoke? I do smoke cigars. No, that is not a bong. That is a uh, kerosene lantern, right? That is a kerosene lantern. Not against it. I just don't do it. <laughs> oh, Gulag Archipelago. Great book, man. I, I get the full volumes. Like I got like, there's like three volumes of it. That's one of the best books ever written. If you want to, um, Yeah. If you, if you want to do that, like it, it, read those books, like that's, that's how I love, um, I love that souls and eating. I actually wrote like in, in college, I wrote like a 120 page paper about it, about like how, like the steps and then the control and everything. And if there's, uh, you know, any, any comparison to, to today, I think there's a lot of comparisons to today. I, I, and in fact, if you, if you want to, if you want to look at the society that the left would want to bring about, go to an airport. Like that's their perfect like vision for reality. Like they like they want total control, cameras everywhere. Like do what we say or you're gonna get arrested. Like no arms, like nothing. Like if you want to look at the society the left wants to bring about, just go to an go to an airport and look at a TSA checkpoint. Yeah, plus pay uh, traders and terrorists. Oh, absolutely. Like that's the thing. Like, and that, that comes right out of Saul Alinsky's book. If if you guys, you know, wanna wanna look at what a vile piece of filth that he was, read his book, Rules for Radicals. Um, they, 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 it's always about labeling and marginalization and, and like, but the thing is guys, like, would you listen to a three-year-old throw a temper tantrum? Like if, if you're in a grocery store and heard a three-year-old do a temper tantrum at you, would you, would you listen at all? Um, I wouldn't like, that's how I view leftists. Like they, they are, they are the children. They are literally the children. That's a temper tantrum because they don't get their way. Like, I don't care what they label me or what they call me whatsoever. They have zero bearing on my life. Um, like I'd gladly get on the mat and roll with them. Like I'd love to choke them out. I'd love to armbar them. I'd I'd love to. Like I I would love to put on a clinic. Like and, and it would be hilarious because I would literally want to make a grown well semi grown man cry. It, it would be a lot of fun. Like when you when you wrestle like when you when you roll with like brown belts like frequently it's really not a big deal. So like then they do have low testosterone anyway. They're they're little. They're like this small. Take a few more questions, guys, out there. But I, um, are Anderson PSAs garbage, or is that just mess that up? You know, they've been making them a while. Uh, I've seen. <laughs> I love San Diego, man. I just haven't been there. Like I, I just like it's hard to, you know, I just don't have time to do to get out there, in California. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu is an effective art. It, it is. It is definitely like it's evolved wrestling. It is evolved wrestling. Absolutely. I love it. It's probably my one of my favorite hobbies right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys are awesome. I, uh, you know, the only reason we've been able to do such amazing things for the last few years, seven years, like if we're coming up on seven years of, of the Ridge, like if you can believe it, that's how fast life goes. 
it's our seventh year. Um, we've had sold out classes, uh, literally. Oh, soldiers in DC. Hell yeah, man. Um, you guys I hear they're not treated so well out there. Um, did you ask why you and I know duty is duty and, uh, I'm sure you guys would much, much better be out there. It would be other places, right? Um, love you guys. Duty is duty. There's always going to be idiots in charge of you. Um, uh, but always maintain your oath to the constitution, I love I love the guardmen guardsmen out there. You guys are awesome. Um, uh, what advice would I give for an armed citizen? Okay, uh, advice I give for an armed citizen: carry your firearm every day, um, because you never know when you're going to get attacked. Okay, keep it loaded, um, and, and and stay ready. I would I would do dry fire every day or every other day, maybe a few minutes a day, because it's not how much you practice; it's how frequently you practice. And what you want to do is you want to stay fresh, so stay recent with your practice, even if it's just a few minutes a day, maybe like three, four, five minutes a day for dry fire, work the holster, work the high ready, all that stuff. Uh, armed citizen for sure. Carry, you know, I, that's it. I, I don't know what kind of whack those out there are going to try to hurt me or my, my, yeah. But you guys out there in DC, as you guys realize, I know duty is duty and you guys probably realize is what it's and you guys probably realize it's it's kind of crazy. But did you guys know that there are more of you in Washington DC than there are in Afghanistan? Like that's that's the government that's in charge right now, guys. Like it, it's it's crazy. And look, I served under partly under Bill Clinton. So I, I get like having an idiot commander in chief who had never served before. Like I understand that. Um, but uh but but understand guys, it's okay. Joe um D Simone, appreciate all your content later. Our self defense bill of rights. Kansas City, man, best barbecue in the world. Uh, I, I I love it out there. Like I love the brisket, and it's like in the in the burn ends. Like you guys, heck yeah, Virginia, heck yeah, uh, awesome. Love looking at Virginia right now, Lee County right there. Uh, one guy asked, do I think the troops will will be involved with firearms confiscation? I, I think that that they may like try to tell them to do that i think a lot of them wouldn't do that and i think a lot of them would probably like leave with good stuff uh <laughs> i don't know i know that if, when i was in if they would have done that um that would have refused to do that you know i mean i know there's a lot of people out there that are the same way i also know that there's a lot of people out there that um that are getting out of the military so um yeah it, it, some would like, let's be honest, guys, like not everybody in the military is a patriot. I mean, like not everybody that serves in uniform is a patriot. There's a lot of them are, you know, a lot of them willingly go away from their family for months and years at a time. I mean, so there are a lot of patriots out there, but um, there's a lot of them that, that would probably lick the boots of the power structure too. So uh, not everybody that serves a patriot, but there are a lot of them. Oh, one guy says in Hurricane Katrina, they followed orders and took firearms. Um, I did not. I was a police officer there. Uh, I did not take anybody's guns. In fact, I encouraged citizens to carry their firearms. Um, and here's the other thing. Now, that was not everybody um, that did that. Maybe some did that, but there's a lot there. In fact, like one of the first things that, that they told us when we got there was like the Second Amendment is like always in effect. Like at no time is anybody's Second Amendment supposed to be violated. So and I wouldn't do that anyway. I don't need to be told not to violate Second, somebody's Second Amendment rights, you know. Um, let's see what else. A lot of good questions, guys. You guys keep them rolling. Got to like maybe a handful more minutes and then I'm going to, then I'm going to go relax. <laughs> I think I got some Pauly Shore movies I'm going to watch tonight. Really, really stimulate the brain, you know? Yeah, you guys, uh, favorite rifle, man. The one that's in my hand when the gunfight starts. That's that's my favorite rifle. I don't care. I, I, AR, AK, doesn't matter. M1, like, it, it just, you'd run them all, but I, I, try to, I try to keep it going. I try to stay proficient with them all. My advice to you guys, though, would not be, like, shoot a bunch of different types of guns. Like, I would, I would stick with one type of gun and get really good with it. And if you want to go over to something else, then you can. Next week, um, if I don't do a live stream next week, guys, um, what I will do possibly is, uh, oh, have I reduced the round count for our, my classes? Uh, no, I, I, we never really shot a lot to begin. We say bring like five or six hundred rounds, but in reality, you'll probably shoot like two fifty, 
maybe three, like if you miss a lot. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we don't really shoot a lot. I mean, we do shoot, but it's not like just burning powder and brass, you know, I mean, you really make every shot count. And I think that um, the people that have been here can say that. Yeah. You guys are, 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 are yeah. And as I was, before I got on the questions here, uh, um, I'll say that uh, for the last seven years, like you guys have made this probably the most enjoyable thing that I've ever done. Um, it's really coming into that nice point in life where uh, it's, 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 I don't want to be the biggest firearms instructor. Like I never really wanted to be one to begin with, but I don't want to be the biggest firearms instructor out there, but I don't want to have like the most students. I, I, I want to be the best. I want to be the best firearms instructor. You guys have, have helped make that come true. Uh, you've really helped set this place apart as someplace very special. Uh, you've made it incredible. You've certainly made my life have a vast amount of meaning to help other people and to spread information. Um, I'm a very big fan of, of, uh, helping people out. Um, I'd much rather be a better instructor than I, than I am a shooter. I would, I would much rather be a better instructor. So, uh, teacher, if you will. So, you know, it's great. Uh, you guys have made that possible. Um, you made that, that incredible thing in my life where, uh, I do this because I want to, not because I have to. You know, um, truth of the matter is, guys, is that I, I, you know, I don't know how long I'll do it. I don't know how long I'm going to teach. I, oh, man, one another question. What event do I think will trigger the next civil war? <laughs> well, I can tell you what triggered our first uh, war in this country was was attempted firearms confiscation at Lexington and Concord. So that may be a good clue, uh, I would think. Hope not. Uh, what do I teach at Valor Ridge? Uh, firearms, pistol and rifle and tactics and CQB and room clearing and vehicle tactics and all, all that fun stuff. That's what we teach out here. <laughs> um Long Island. Oh man. Yeah, I've got friends up there. I've got my good buddies V up there, uh really really cool guy. Um Long Island, I've been there. I was there in 2006. I went to the Yankees game and then went to Montauk and uh had a had a few adult beverages out there. It's pretty good time. But yeah, come down. We have all kinds. We have all kinds of people from from Long Island and, and New York in general, and that's another state. Yeah, that's another state where there's a lot of conservative people there. Um, there's a lot of of good conservatives up there, especially upstate. Um, Andrew, the best evidence is the students' target. Yeah, especially yours, man. Especially yours. Chase, I think you're like the first class, maybe make first or second class. I remember. A lot has changed. You you may not recognize the place when you get here. We've always upgraded it. Um, I don't want to put Chase on the spot here, but he worked like for a while. Like he saved like a lot of tips. He's a he was a uh, delivery guy. Saved a lot of his tips to come to class. So like that was awesome. You awesome young guy. He's a kind of guy. I asked this Maryland a lost cause. Um, I don't know if anywhere is a lost cause. I mean, it's it's going to take a lot of work, and then you know it's going to take a lot of effort guys, all this stuff is, is effort and willpower like that. That's really what it is. And I know it's easy to say, oh, this place is screwed or I will never get it back. But you know, at the end of the day, like what you got to understand is it didn't get that way overnight. Like people in, in Boston, people in Massachusetts didn't just say, oh, we want to be ruled with an iron fist. Like it didn't just happen. Like it, it was slow and incremental. And, and it's easy because in a free country, it's easy to get lazy. Okay. It's easy to get lazy and, and overlook things and, and do that. And it's, and that's okay. But but what I want you to think about is like, it didn't get that way overnight. I also know that people can vote with their feet. You know, that's the best voting that you can do is vote with your feet. If you live in a place that you don't like, you know, go to somewhere that's better, but don't keep voting the same way that caused the problems in the first place. Right. That should be a rule. Like if you screwed up one state, you can't screw up another one. <laughs> uh, Michael, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. But other than that, guys, um, maybe just a few more minutes here. I try to keep it under an hour. Not just, you know, because of that, but because um, it's, it's it's a good thing. I may do more live streams. I think I may do that. I'll do one maybe a couple of months, and then we can really get going on, on a good time. I'll let you guys know ahead of time in advance and schedule it. That way you can uh, do that. What would be my final, I think, straw in my mind to gear up and resist? Like I've, I've said it before, guys. Like, like you ain't banning any of my firearms or anything like that. that that's my final straw. And religion too, religious liberties. If if they would crack down on that, I, I probably wouldn't 
you know, I wouldn't have any problem whatsoever, you know, getting stuff done. Toshiaki K, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Do I teach people with mental disability or illness? I think we're all like mentally disabled in some way. <laughs> like these people probably think I'm mentally ill because I stand up for freedom and care about like other people, I guess. Um, dude, I don't know. Like, I, I guess like nothing is all the same. There's like varying degrees of things, right? Yeah. Somebody said that should be everyone's red line. Yeah, I, I agree. How long does it take to make a 10 minute video on YouTube? For me, it takes like five hours. I know that's no joke. I mean, I got to edit the videos. Like I got to do everything. And like, I, I would make more videos guys. The thing is I got so much stuff to do around here. Like our first class of the year is coming up in less than two weeks. So I'm really going to have to focus on that. I'm really gonna have to focus on, on getting it ready. I got to, you know, I'll get everything set up here and uh, it's very busy. Like I, like, I don't like, I don't have the time videos. I like, I wish I would do more videos too i really do but the thing is i don't have the time i'm not like like my youtube doesn't like it's great it's a great platform it's allowed me to reach i don't i don't do this stuff full time and i know there's other channels that can invest in high dollar equipment and great microphones and great video editing and like they've even got people that do that and i appreciate all that stuff but but please understand i can't do that i don't don't have the time. I'm a firearms instructor. Like, like I'd run a business here. Uh, and, and I, I just don't have the time to do it. And so if I, if I make one a week or one every other week, that's, that's probably about my threshold. I wish I could do more, but, um, yeah. Washington come to class. Oh yeah. We've, um, we've had students from all 50 states, like literally, I mean, we've, we've had students from all 50 states. So it's, it's, yeah, people from Washington do that all the time. Why did the founders write the second amendment? No, I'm probably because of the times, like how we're living in right now to fight against tyranny. That's why insecurity, they, they fought, they, they wrote the second amendment to guarantee that, that there would always be an armed citizen. There'd always be an armed population in the United States outside of government. Um, let's see who else here. Oh, somebody asked, do, am I the one that teaches, um, class? Do I, do I teach every class? Yeah, I do. Uh, because I love it. I, I enjoy teaching. I don't like, um, I definitely teach every class. I like, like the vast majority of every class. Like I do a lot of the, the classroom stuff and, um, all that. So yeah, I do. I do teach every class. I mean, I got great guys that help me. Like guys like Ken and Dylan, and but I, I do teach uh, every class. I'm at every class certainly, and I and I teach the vast majority of the, of the class. Um, so yeah, I am there. So you come to class, you sign up. I'm gonna be be. I will be there. Like barring any like life emergency, God forbid, you know. Uh, <laughs> one guy says, "I worship God and chug chug beer with with Jesus." Um, you know, there's a question. If you could, if you could drink a beer with anybody throughout history, who would it be? I get to ask that question a lot. Like if I could drink beer from, if I could drink a beer with anybody throughout history, who would it be? I, that's a tough one. There's at least like 10 people at, at least, you know, at least 10 people who I would want to drink a beer with like in history. On these videos on some of these questions guys I, I, a lot of my videos I, I go over this stuff so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do i think that you'll really like it um there's good information there you get to see me with longer hair you know it just got in the way i was working on the tractor it got in the way it like infuriated me so i just i cut it back makes me look younger anyway you know help i can get any more <laughs> you guys in the super chat I, I appreciate that um as well um I think that uh, I think I'll probably do these more regularly. And um, like I said, I understand that the signals may not be. I mean, I'm on like satellite internet, so please understand that I don't have I don't live in a city. I live, live way far away from cities, and uh, I'm out here, so it's as good as it's going to get. So um, understand, guys, that do this again soon, much sooner. And uh, you guys, stakes courageous. You know, we don't really do 
we got to stay and keep keep that passion for freedom right here and influence what you can influence influence what you can influence and don't try to do too many things we've only got so much time in life um and i'll catch you guys in in a week or two and other than that enjoy yourself and uh stay dangerous you know stay dangerous and 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 teach these younger kids these, these important lessons uh thank you guys very much and um we will talk to you soon